Fair treatment when you start talking about people, but what we're talking about is a legal issue. I want to get to where you're going, but the thing is, is that it's, um, I want to make sure that we can get there in the same boat. The, the disparate treatment that you're talking about is, is that how does it work when, whenever the two people would be similarly situated whenever they're on, on the ballot, but they're not whenever you start talking about exempt and non-exempt. And so if you have a, a economic interest that's on file, then it's current. That's the language. See, the, the, the Supreme Court, they're not trying to treat us different. They're just trying to interpret what we did. And what we did was we had some, we had something that was in our laws that had to be read together, and we didn't read it together. And I don't believe justice read it together whenever they listened to it in 2010. I don't think that justice went back and looked to to see this is what they did in 1991. They looked at, at the law that we ended up having, and they read it together, and I don't believe that they, that they read it together as well. So my last point is this. People should be treated the same. That's the equal protection. What we did, though, is, is that we, we treated them, uh, we, we gave them a different category to stand in. And so that's why you cannot compare it. Now, we can get an amendment that we can put folks on the ballot. I'm for that. And you can put it whenever. You can reopen it for what I care. But the thing is, is that the issue um, is, is this. I think it's legally flawed. All right, Senator Buford, and then, then I'm going to move around. We're going we're gonna to get to everybody. Senator Thanks, Buford. Mr. Chair. I, I would Let's take it out. Yeah, Mr. Chair. That'll help. We don't need this discussion right now. Senator yeah. Darling. Mr. Chair, I, I am just want to um, sort of move move this ball on down on down the road some. I, I I really think that we are talking about two different classes on exempt and non-exempt. The rational basis argument makes some some sense from a lay perspective. It does appear that people are treated unfairly, but in a legal sense, I don't think that it is because you're talking about two different classes. But I think we need to get to a solution to where we can move the ball down the road. And so with that, what I want to do is, is that I move, I move that we strike the, the, um, the preamble and the finding in section one and just keep the substance of the bill intact. Mr. Chairman. Senator. Charleston. I, you know, section one are findings. If we end up in court, we can argue that. That's right. Um, it's not substantive, so I, I would concur in that amendment. Right. That brings some some votes and support for it. All right. We have a motion. Motion. We, he would delete the section one, which are the findings, and the findings only, and the uh, the portion of the title that relates to the findings. We have a motion. We have a second. Senator Charleston, any discussion? On that point, Senator from Senator Fairfield. I want to make it clear that, that when we're dealing with this, we're talking about the treatment and also uh, the equal protection. We're issue. taking it out. Taking that we're all ta that out. That's correct. With that. And that's throughout. That will be part of an argument that will right. be made. I'm that that's it, it, it's that clad, and I'm sorry that's clouded this issue this long, Senator from uh, Dorchester. Do you have a comment? Is there a need to? Mr. Chairman, I have a comment that's related to this amendment? Well, it, it's related in that there's another alternative. It's not related in that I object to what we're about to do. So we can go ahead and vote on this. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Any further amendments? Now the question is a favor report as amended. I asked, is there any further amendments? Any further amendments? Got an amendment on right here we passed out. You didn't propose, I didn't hear you propose well, it. All right, we have a proposed amendment. Senator Blackson, propose the amendment. <laughs> Chairman, since we're going to pass this thing out and we're in such a haste to correct something that's 20 something years old, most of us in the was not even elected at that time. And uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, we want to do it in three days. Uh, I applaud you for it. But let's, uh, since we're going to have to have pre clearance with the Justice Department. Let's go ahead and fix the problem for future elections. My proposal just simply does is very common sense deal. Right now we have 46 Democrat chairmen and 46 Republican chairmen in the state. All of them taking filing for their candidates. 
all of them collecting money that ends up at the State Elections Commission. We have each chairman in each county, in each party, got different standards to what they're looking for. In one county, you're talking about equal protection, one county chairman that may be of one party and one county of chairman that may be of the other party in the same county have different uh, requirements. So let's cut to the chase and let's, while we, we're going to have to have preclearance, let's go ahead and get preclearance on the fixing of the problem. Put the entire process, and I've talked with uh, the uh, uh, director of the election commission and also the lawyer for the Republican Party just prior to this meeting. And they both agree that this is the fix for future elections. And that is that the election commission takes all applications for <laughs> filing regardless what party or what uh, petition candidate or whatever. They take the application at the county election commission and then at that time you fill out all required documentation for filing including a, a requirement that you provide your SEI either a copy of it or a confirmation number so that the election commission can check it online. They got the computers in every one of the election office. They can check it online that you have filed. And at the time you write the check and fill out the paperwork at the election commission, you are certified at that minute, not by April the 30th. And when you walk out of there, you know you're a candidate. When you walked in, you didn't know whether you were qualified or not, but when you walk out, you are either qualified or not qualified. Senator Guy, I have a few questions. And this is an adding a, adding a uh, section to this amendment. Yes, Senator, sir, you can. Uh, if I may. Your amendment, it's not adding a section, it's a striking insert. Is it your intention to strike the amendment that we just adopted that would allow the April 15th filing for this year's candidates? They've written this thing three times. It is a striking... Right, it's not what I was going to do. Add a section. You want it to be as and if amended? Add, add as if amended. All right. Uh, Senator Charleston, you had a question? Yes, sir. Um, Miss, Mr. Chairman, I don't, um, and members of the committee, I, I really am not, don't, I'm not, not arguing this is a bad idea, um, but I don't think this is the place and the time to do this for several reasons. I had some ideas of some changes I wanted to make to this code section while we were in it. In it. And after talking with staff and Hitchcock and Associates and many others, I concluded it's best for us just to deal <coughs> with the provisions that the court construed in order to provide a remedial response. Because, again, um, the court has held that statutes which are remedial or procedural in nature are generally held to operate retrospectively. That's South Carolina Department of Revenue v. v. Rosemary Coin Machines. And we're trying to qualify, we're trying to get this statute, this bill, to qualify under that provision. And so I think it's important for us to not to add other things that we would like to change in order to help us pass constitutional muster. As a matter of policy, I'm not arguing against the Senator from Lexington's amendment. As a matter of what's the best way to deal with this crisis, this political and legislative and even judicial crisis that's confronted the state at this juncture, now's not the time to deal with matters like this. I had provisions I wanted to put into this bill, things that needed to be fixed, but now's not the time for extraneous fixes. Now's the time to qualify under South Carolina Department of Revenue v. Rosemary as a procedural <laughs> remedial fix because the courts have generally interpreted those as being applicable retroactively and that's what we want 
in this instance is retroactive application. Okay, Senator. And, Thank you. So I would move that we not, I would, I would recommend we not adopt that. All right, Senator uh, Sparkson, we're here today to, to try to help the people who didn't pick up on all that, who maybe were given misinformation. And I agree with the Senator from Charleston. I'm, I'm going to help the Senator from Lexington with this because we had, I mean, both parties, 46 chairmen of both parties all over the state that I believe were on different pages of the, trying to be on the same sheet of music, but they were on different pages. So. I'm going to help the senator from Lexington with his amendment, but I agree with the senator from Charleston that I don't think this committee is the time and place for that because this is something we're going to deal with for election law next year. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you're going to have I to respond to that? Yes, yeah, Senator. Since it's uh, my amendment. Right. You know, people, let's quit the grandstanding. I sit here and listen, haven't said a word. Not one word. Listen to each and every one of you. All you're doing is grandstanding, trying to fix a quick fix and be, be reactionary again, just like we do up here all the time. We don't need to be reactionary. We need to not only fix it for this election, which if you want this amendment that you have to fix it, then that's fine. But also fix it for future elections. If you've got to have pre-clearance, we all know you got to have preclearance. Why not send it all up as a package deal and fix the whole thing? No, you want another day to come back and grandstand on this. Now, I've got a Senator Glenn Reese, a uh, senator from Spartanburg, sent me a, a uh, letter that was sent out by his party, and, he, and, and the party says, and we'll pass you out a copy of it. The reason I said they have 46 Democrat Senate, uh, uh, chairmen and 46 Republican chairmen, and all of them have different perspectives on how the law is and what is needed for filing, this is living proof. The law that was interpreted by the Supreme Court, and I applaud them for what y'all, what, what I've heard up here in these halls many, many times is condemning the Supreme Court for this uh, uh, decisions that they'll make and say that basically one thing, they always interpret it wrong, or they make law, they don't interpret the law. Now the thing is simply this, they did their job, this law was written in 1991, and it was amended in 2010, and the co-sponsors, about it, uh, 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 that added the amendment in 2010 was Representative Nathan Ballantyne, I have the bill here, and th then Representative Nikki Hayden. They were the main co-sponsors on the bill. And it was about transparency to let the public know what the people uh, voting to, needed to know about those people, about transparency. Now, transparency is transparency is for everybody. And that's the reason the law was changed. That's why nobody up here stood out and fussed about it. I was here. I voted for it because I've always done it. Like the senator from Spartanburg. In 1994 was my election, the first election, and I was the first uh, set of candidates that had to abide by the 1991 passage of that of that law and i filed everything and i have done it every time just like i was told to do it because number one i read the law and i sit back and listen and i did it the right way just like the senator from spartanburg did this time i did it the right way and if you're going to run for office you need to know the law in order to get elected so you can pass laws. Now, why sit up here and grandstand and say, we're going to put a quick fix just to please 20% or whatever number it is, a percentage of the people that registered uh, to be a candidate? 80% did it right, 20% did it wrong, and now we want to do a quick fix. And I'm not against them getting on the, on the ballot. But if we're going to fix it, let's fix it for future elections also. 
so we won't be back up here again and and, and everybody be upset and nobody seems to they always say well let's wait the next year wait the next year sir well, it's sort of like the old Carolina football game used to be wait the next year when this year this year next year came for Carolina and this year this meeting right here needs to be the time and the place that is next year for this amendment to correct this problem. Sir Don. Mr. Chair, uh, I think that there's some, I read the body language, it seems as though that there's um, pretty good consensus for um, Senator um, Knox's um, um, proposal. And so what I would move is, is that we take Senator um, from Lexington's proposal, make it a Judiciary Committee bill to send it out on the floor separately so and, and actually it would go without reference and be placed on, on the calendar. Because the way that it's drafted now is that it's a strike all. It actually does something different. It, it also undoes something undoes something we just did. And so that it continues to have life that we make that we make it a So what does that do uh, undo that uh, we just did? The state uh, section two where it says the uh, uh it, that that part sub item B you still you still put it in a, in a separate issue. You put it in a separate bill. We can put it in a separate bill. We can correct that. We can correct that. And Mr. Is Chairman, it, all right. you know yourself sitting there that it takes uh, two uh, it takes a, a two thirds of the body right. to pass to pass a Senate bill after May first. Now let's let the public know about the rules up here. You use the rules to be the rules. Now, it takes two thirds here. No, sir, I'm not. I'm just trying to explain to you what is being misrepresented to these people. We'll put it on the bill and send it out and be a committee bill. It takes two thirds to pass it on out and get to the House. And then the House has to vote it to take it up. So let's. Uh, if there's a problem with the amendment that it done done something that y'all wanted in there, but the main option is fix it for the up for, for the future elections. And unless you do that, this bill's dead. Because I'm gonna put a minority report on it and vote against it. Senator Sparkberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with what's trying to be done here to get this out. Is there any reason that the senator from Lexington's amendment can't be put on at the floor? And I think he talks about the rules and the process. I think he's, I think if he puts his amendment up on the floor to this resolution, I believe he can hold the floor to talk about it. Well, a here's, here's so, what we can do. Senator Sparber, you raise a good point. Uh, as long as we understand this, his amendment, and I think he said this, applies prospectively. And it, it would not it would not impede the, 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 the fix that we've already adopted by way of an amendment. I don't think there's any harm at all. Well, and the reason I say that, Mr. Right. Chairman, is because we, I know that I know that his amendment is written incorrectly at this point. I don't believe it's his right. intention to write the amendment the way right. it's written. Okay. So we, I agree with the Senator from Kershaw. Okay. We need to move on with the bill and let him offer his amendment on the floor to this. Well, he's going to sign a minority report if we don't put the amendment on, Senator Spartan. Well, are we going to take time to draft it correctly? Yes, sir. We, we, we've, got, we've got the technical draft. Yes. So we're out of time. The Senator from Lexington. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think that, that, that we need to make a, a fix to this problem. And I think the date that you have on here, what, what, what is the date that you have on the amendment now? On the it's, prospective. Amendment? It's, it's prospective on future elections. That's the way you... I know it, but I'm talking about on the actual bill that we've uh, uh, we passed. Well, I'm not passed, but we're talking about that we're amending my amendment too. The date that we have is what date? Is it March the 30th? Oh, April. April. It would be April 15th, and then uh, uh, the five-day grace period. That's the amendment as it's So you changed. are changing the filing period. We've already, adopt, five we've already adopted that amendment. So. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Okay, so that does have to have pre-clearance. Yes, you got to. Yes. Okay. So your amendment is before the uh, body prospectively. Those in favor of the yes, amendment. Yes, Mr. Chair, and we have, and we've changed the um, the language. Did we yeah. move to strike the? She's going to perform. You're going to perform it. Be, be prospective. Okay. Well, I first move that we that we conform. It. We're going to do it. We're going to vote for it. I said we're going to vote. I move that we conform his amendment to take out the strike language. Right. 
Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Now the question is the adoption of the amendment. All those in favor, please raise your hand. The adoption of Senator Lexington <coughs> amendment. It's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You get a minority report otherwise. All right. All those opposed? And how many proxies do we have? We had some of you. Larry votes aye. Gregory votes aye. And I don't know if we can use that or not. Just that's a no. How you vote? By vote of by vote of 13 to 7, the amendments adopted. Any further amendments? Hearing none, now the question is the adoption of the bill as amended. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Before you do that, tell me what we have done. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a brief overview. Right. We well, make sure we well we, but he, he's asked for he's asked let for you, Okay, let me ask you one question to clar clarify. Under what we just did with all the candidates being on the ballot. Unless they didn't file one at all, they, they would be on the ballot. And I think there are some that did not file any at all, and they would not be on the ballot. They didn't file all the time. Well, they, did, they filed they did after time. April 20th. Yeah. Did they try to file on time? Yeah. Did they try to file on time? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It, it just if, if they didn't file by April 15th with the five-day grace period, which is April 20th, this this would not capture them. Mr. Chairman, change my vote tonight. On your amendment? I mean, on the bill. On the bill. All right. Does that does that explain? Does that answer your question? All right. The question is the adoption of the bill as amended. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, no. Mr. Chairman. I'm in the middle of a vote, unless you... All right. Mr. Chairman. I wait just a minute. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Senator, wait a minute. we got to finish the vote. Hold on just a second. The proxies will be with Senator Clary, Senator Gregory, Senator Rankin. No, can't vote him. 16 to 2. The, the bill is reported out favorably as amended. Senator from Lexington. May I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Explain this. Does the bill that we're fixing, that we're voting on, does it say that the people that attempted to file during the time of filing up to March 30th that did not get on the ballot would be on the ballot? Yes, sir. That's what it says. Yes, sir. Now, what about the people that didn't comply until after the filing date had ended? Are we they that. still going to be able to That's the first yes, violate the law and be on the ballot? That's the yes. first amendment we adopted. Okay. Mr. Chair, First Amendment we adopted. Senator from uh, Darling. In order to make certain that we can have something parallel, I, I will ask that the committee hang on for just a second. The, um, the, the matter that the Senator from Lexington has filed, I would ask, I would move that we take his amendment, make it a committee bill standalone, and send out to the floor as, as well. So he will blue back it, it will go across the desk, be placed on the calendar. Senator from Lexington's up, up amendment. It's already part of the bill. I, I understand, but the thing is... He's is signing a minority report. I understand he may not sign a minority report on his own bill, though, so it gives him, it gives him a chance still. I just think we give it an opportunity to give to give it a chance to pass. All right, we've got a, propose, a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, I have a second. All those in favor of the senator's motion, please raise your hand. Be a committee bill on the proposal as presented. Gives it a chance to pass, guys. <coughs> Gives it a chance to pass. All right. All those opposed? You got to have some 
All right, four, hold up just a minute. We've got to have a, a vote uh, in three proxies, Gregory, Clary, and that's it, and Rankin. All right, by a vote of 15-0, to the committee bill will be reported to the floor. The committee will, no further business coming forward, so the committee will stand in recess to reconvene at 3 p.m. Senate committee's in recess.